Hi everyone! Take a look at this animation. I made it in Blender, mainly using two of its features. The armature, like the bomb system, and the grease pencil objects. I've always been looking for ways to combine the artistic freedom of hand-drawn animation with the use of rigs, but in a way that doesn't limit my freedom. Disclaimer! What I'm showing you today is not a game changer. This workflow requires drawing skills, grease pencil sculpting skills, and quite a bit of technical blender knowledge. To make things easier, this scene is set up with a static camera placed perpendicular to the scene. This system works also with strange camera angles and full 3D space, but let's not overcomplicate things from the start. First, I created a flat rig. I didn't use any plugins, I just built the whole system bone by bone, roughly matching a humanoid shape. I started with the root bone. Then I extruded the base of the character from it, followed by four bones for the belly, chest, neck and the head. If the character were simpler, I could easily get away with just two bones, for example base and the head. But sometimes I just like to complicate my simple life. Because I created bones by extruding them from the previous ones, they automatically had a parent-child relationship. However, I disabled connected option in each new bone. I wanted them to inherit position, rotation and scale from the parent, but still be movable independently. Then I created the arm bones the same way. Three bones per side, parent-child, but not connected. The legs were a bit different. The feet are parented directly to the root bone, the calves to the feet and the tights to the base bone. You can do it differently. For now, this setup works best for me. You might ask, Wukash, why not use inverse kinematics? The simple answer is, because we are working with perfectly flat grease pencil objects and IK system could cause more problems that it would actually solve. Remember to name your bones properly. Otherwise, you'll dive straight into chaos. Fun, but not very effective. I also went a bit fancy and gave my bones custom shapes. Do whatever you like. Octahedrons aren't that bad either after all. Okay, the rig is ready. Now, I create a new grease pencil object. In the center, I place a simple mark. In this case, a dot. It's not necessary, but it helps to easily select grease pencil objects in the viewport early on. I also make sure I already have all the materials I'll need. I'll be duplicating the very same grease pencil object so it saves a lot of time later on. I need as many grease pencil objects as I have bones. Actually, one less, since I don't count the root. So I duplicate them and I attach them to the rig using the child of constraint. Head to head, foot to foot, belly to belly. Just remember to rotate your first grease pencil object the way it faces the camera. And seriously, name your objects. Time to plan the animation. I create a new grease pencil object, not attached to the rig. This will be my sketch. Let it be a... Nasty Gnome casting a fireball. First, I draw the first keyframe. Then the last one. And the breakdown in between. Maybe add some anticipation and overshoot. Now, I go to the bone system and pose mode. I place the bones so they match the sketch. Notice that I mostly rotate them around the global Y axis, because I'm working with flat grease pencil objects. Now I'll start filling the grease pencil objects with the real content. They are roughly on the same plane, which can cause some ugly artifacts. I will fix that by moving objects forward and backward along the Y axis. So in my case, what's in front? And what's behind is decided not by a layer order, but by the actual 3D position of the grease pencil object. And that gives a lot of freedom. Using motion paths for bones is a great practice. They help guide motion in arcs and make the animation more pleasing to the eye. This technique is cool because it lets you use a rig and still draw new keyframes whenever you want. But sometimes I can avoid even that by simply re-sculpting the stuff. If I don't change the structure of the keyframe, no new elements, no stroke order changes, I can fill the space between frames with automatic in-betweens. In draw mode, I use Ctrl plus Shift plus E and usually set flip mode to no flip. I can tweak 
easing and hope that in overall motion my little chit will go unnoticed. Mm, okay, it's starting to look decent. Some objects, like for example hands, can be really hard to re-sculpt. Then I just redraw them. With fast motion it should be fine. Of course, this animation still needs a lot of work. I have to pay special attention to where grease pencil objects connect. But it's still much less work than drawing everything frame by frame. And here it is, a nasty gnome, casting a fireball. I'm really curious if this technique will be useful for you. Or maybe you'll just take one part of this workflow and use it in your own animation and in your own system. Either way, good luck with your projects. Bye.